Welcome back, sixth grade. It's me, Mr. Behe, and this week I have the pleasure of teaching you. Maybe. <laughs> Hello, sixth grade. It's me, Mr. Behe, and this week I have the pleasure of teaching you our nifty nation. But first, let's see what's happening on this day in history on May 7th. Doing anything. Here's a look at this day in history, May 7th. In 1789, the first inaugural ball was held in New York. In 1915, the ocean line of Lusitania was sunk by a German torpedo, bringing America closer to the end of World War I. In 2000, Vladimir Putin was sworn in as Russia's president and that nation's first democratic transfer of power. And on this day in 1994, one of the world's most iconic paintings was recovered after it was stolen from a Norwegian museum. The scream by expressionist painter Edvard Munch cried out to many as a symbol of anxiety of modern life. It was so well known that the men who stole it couldn't sell it. But 10 years later, thieves made off with another version of the painting. That scream was recovered safely in 2006. And that's this story in history. So this week, I'm not going to play games with you and give you clues and ask you to guess where we're going to go. I'm just going to jump right to it. This week, we've chosen to discuss the national parks. And I'm really excited to show you some really neat websites that I want you to get on and explore and, and go on some virtual trips and check out what is available to us in our great nation. So a brief history of the national parks. Uh, there are 62 protected areas in 29 states, the American Samoa and the U.S. Virgin Islands. President Ulysses S. Grant signed a law in 1872 creating Yellowstone National Park. The Organic Act of 1916 created the National Park Service. And California has the most national parks with nine, followed by Alaska with eight, Utah with five, and Colorado has four. Now, if you click on these national park links that I'm putting here, it will take you to their websites and you can explore some more of the, the 62 national parks throughout the country. I want you to watch this quick video here with one of the rangers and it's, it's very informative. So here you go.
Hello, my name is Shelton Johnson, and I'm a park ranger here in Yosemite National Park. Directly over my shoulder is Yosemite Valley, one of the most iconic landscapes in the face of the earth, and of course, the first preserved natural area in the Western Hemisphere. Yosemite is one of our oldest national parks and one of the most beautiful places in the world. But for me, growing up in inner city Detroit, Yosemite was a very far away place. Far away, not just geographically, but culturally as well. Where I grew up, people didn't talk about national parks. No one that I knew visited national parks. It never came up as a topic of conversation. And so I felt that the distance between myself and this kind of landscape was incredibly vast. But now, I've become a ranger, and I realized that that was an illusion, that I was misinformed, that this place is as much a part of me as where I was uh, growing up in Detroit. And, and to me, it actually is more meaningful because this for me is America. The national parks re are representative of America. And whenever I visit any national park, I feel like I'm coming home. And it's been an interesting journey to go from the inner city of Detroit to the national parks, to places like the Grand Canyon or Zion or Yellowstone or right here in Yosemite. But the journey was well worth it. And I encourage everyone, everyone who has ever even considered visiting a national park to work, to work out that, uh, that wish, that desire, and take it upon yourself to, to come out here to these places because you will not regret it. Uh, it can change your life and it will change your life for the better. These are landscapes, these are stories, these are histories that can transform the way you look at the world and your place in that world. And so I highly recommend that you take it upon yourself to bring your children here. And if you're a young person, do encourage your parents to bring you here because this is something that is not just a place, it is something that you own. It belongs to you, it belongs to all of us, and all you have to do to claim it is to get here and enjoy it. And it's here for everyone to enjoy. So come on out. Thank you. Hi, I'm John Jarvis, the director of the National Park Service. Yosemite Park Ranger Shelton Johnson is just one of thousands of engaging and interesting people waiting in America's 393 national parks to help you with a great experience. Maybe you want to go to Yosemite National Park like Oprah, but then again, maybe camping is not your thing. So there are other great experiences out there as well. You can go to Thomas Edison's laboratory or to Martin Luther King Jr.'s boyhood home, or you could hike on a glacier or explore a petroglyph. All of these experiences are there and more. Find out about us at nps.gov. We look forward to seeing you. So if you click on these links that I have down here, the National Park Service logo, they will take you to some websites and check out some great sites throughout our country. I want you to challenge yourself by clicking on this slide and you can click on these slides because we will upload a separate PDF file uh, that you can access on your Google Classroom. I'm not gonna take the time to watch it with you, but it's a very cool video that it'll show you three different parks and they'll ask you to guess which one, do you know which one it is? And then at the end, it does a little bit of a summary throughout all the national parks. So take some time to check that out. And you can get to that by actually clicking on the words. Another feature that I'm leaving here for you kids to try out is going to the National Park Service website and what you can do is you can click into this box right up here, and it'll give you all the national parks throughout the entire country. Now, I told you above that there were 62. Those are the big, huge parks. The National Park Service is actually in charge of running historic land sites, battlefields, other places of significance to our country's history. So you'll see other things listed there as well. But today I wanna focus in on the huge national parks. If you can't get to a national park all over the country, there are some in Pennsylvania that have some historic significance, okay? In Pennsylvania, there are 19 national parks, but they're much smaller. Um, you can see a whole list of here, list here, heritage sites, scenic sites, trails. So there, there's a lot of stuff in Pennsylvania that you have access to if you're not able to travel throughout the country. 
This is another interactive map that you can click on and you, it'll take you all over the country. The different colors show the significance like I was telling you about, whether they are the big national parks or if they're just historic places. So feel free to check that out in your own time. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, how does Google Earth work with the national parks? And let me take you there right now. This one's gonna be a little longer, but I don't care. Know what I mean, Vern? So there it is, folks. Here's Google Earth with the National Parks of the United States. You can zoom in as we normally do. You can zoom in on these sites and then you can click on the actual pictures and they'll take you to all these sites, show you all the awesome pictures, the landscapes, everything. Way up here in Alaska, we have Denali. Acadia up Northeast there, Everglades, and our territories. So this is really neat. I'm not gonna take the time to go through and show you all these things because I want you to be able to explore on your own. On the right-hand side here as well, you can just click on the actual parks and they'll show you great pictures. And that you can also just click through and go through all of the satellite imagery showing you the different landscapes of the national parks. Okay, so this is an awesome, awesome tool. And I think a lot of you are enjoying the Google Earth aspect of what we're doing. So this is a great thing that's already loaded. And I found this by searching underneath um, the Voyager here and just typed in national parks and this came up. So to wrap up our lesson today, it brings us to our passport to history. If you were able to visit one of the national parks that you learned about today, which one would you visit first? What do you consider to be a unique, to be unique about the park you'd want to visit? And feel free to continue using this slideshow as a resource for exploring our nifty nation. Just like the movies, if you stuck around long enough, folks, you can see some bonus slides. And here's a, a few pictures of my own trip to the Grand Canyon back in 2018. And like the park ranger said in the video earlier, it can change your life getting to one of these things. And I can tell you, my wife and I and our family truly enjoyed being in the Grand Canyon, as you can tell by my face on the left there. That's the first picture I took when arriving 
and seeing the Grand Canyon for the first time. It's a truly majestic place and you can't believe how beautiful and stunning it truly is until you see these things with your own eyes. All right, kids, we hope you enjoyed the national parks today. Please click and interact with, with the slides that we put up there. I'm also putting a PDF out there that you can click on and go through the slideshow yourself. Okay. Have a great week and take care. Bye.